and this is Andy, K4GKP, and welcome back to the Ham Whisper and Lesson 17 of the General Class Operator Element 3 exam course. In this lesson, we go over the G4 questions from the question pool. The G4C questions cover interference with consumer electronics and grounding. Which of the following might be useful in reducing RF interference to audio frequency devices? The answer is a bypass capacitor. What this is getting into is radio frequency interference, or RFI, and if your stereo is picking up amateur radio signals, or your neighbor's stereo, who, or whoever's stereo, this is probably being picked up through the speaker wires. And one of the things you can do to prevent this is to use capacitors to bypass the unwanted signals and send them directly to the speaker's ground. So a bypass capacitor might be useful in reducing RF interference to audio frequency devices. Which of the following should be installed if a properly operating amateur station is interfering with a nearby telephone? This is sort of a technician class course review, but the answer is an RFI filter at the affected telephone. And for this question, the problem you want to solve is preventing radio frequency from affecting a telephone or interfering with a telephone. So what you want to do is you want to filter out all the RFI or radio frequency interference so an RFI filter on the telephone is the answer. So this is not installed at the station, it's installed at the affected telephone. So an RFI filter at the affected telephone should be installed if a properly operating amateur station is interfering with a nearby telephone. What sound is heard from a public address system if there is interference from a nearby single sideband phone transmitter? Well, what you're going to hear is what whoever is communicating on single sideband, you're going to hear a distorted speech coming over the PA system. So your speech from your radio will be heard on the public address system and will sound ugly. So PA systems can sometimes pick up radio signals in the same way that your stereo speakers can, but they're not really designed to, and so the result is a distorted sounding speech. So distorted speech is what a single sideband phone transmitter will sound like over a PA system. What is the effect on a public address system if there is interference from near a nearby CW transmitter? Well, what you're going to hear is an on and off humming or clicking as the key gets pushed up and down. And it's the same idea as the last question. So as you are transmitting CW, you can hear the dits and the dots click on and off on the PA system, and there may be some humming in between. So if you hear on and off humming or clicking coming out of a PA system, the problem might be interference from a nearby CW transmitter. What might be the problem if you receive an RF burn when touching your equipment while transmitting on an HF band, assuming the equipment is connected to a ground rod? The problem is the ground wire may be resonant. Now, your ground wire can pick up signals like an antenna if it's at the right length, so it can resonate just like any antenna can. And this is bad. And what it does is prevent the ground wire from doing its job and disposing of the unwanted RF from the station. So you can get an RF burn if you touch the wrong thing, if, if your ground wire is resonating. So this is the reason why you need to make sure that your ground wire is as short as possible because the shorter it is, less likely it's going to resonate at HF bands. So if you're getting RF burns from your equipment and your station is grounded, what's happening is probably the ground wire is resonating on your frequency. Which of the following is an important reason to have a good station ground? Well, there are lots of reasons. To reduce likelihood of RF burns, to reduce the likelihood of electrical shock, to reduce interference, and this is an all of the above question on the exam. A good solid ground will solve a lot of your problems with your station, both in its operation and with safety. So always make sure your equipment is properly grounded and that your ground wire is as short as possible. What is one good way to avoid stray RF energy in an amateur station? And here we go again, keep the station's ground wire as short as possible. Short ground wires have less chance of resonating at frequency, so if you keep it short, that'll help prevent RF energy from going astray in your amateur station. Which of the following is a reason to place ferrite beads around audio cables to reduce common mode RF interference? The answer is they act as a series inductor. And so as current passes through the wire, these metal beads will start to act as an inductor. They'll build up a magnetic field. This magnetic field can act as a filter to prevent RFI from traveling up the wire. So ferrite beads around audio cables can act as a series inductor to help filter out RFI. Which of the following statements about station grounding is true? And this question is building off the keep your ground wire as short as possible theme from previous questions in the lesson. The answer to the question is RF hotspots can occur in a station located above the ground floor if the equipment is grounded by a long ground wire. 
So if you're on the second floor of a building, the chances are that your ground wire is longer than if you were on the first floor or closer to the ground with, or the earth. So the length of the ground wire may allow it to resonate when you transmit resulting in RF hotspots at your station. So remember the RF burns. So keep your ground wire short as possible. And if you have it on the second floor, just kind of be on the lookout for RF hotspots. Which of the following is covered in the National Electrical Code? The answer is electrical safety inside the ham shack. And it, this is the only answer with the word electrical in it, and the FCC deals with all other possible answers, but in this one, you're just looking for electrical. The natural, National Electrical Code deals with electrical safety, and if a building is up to code, that means it's reasonably safe. So the National Electric Code deals with electrical safety inside the ham shack. Which of the following can cause unintended rectification of RF signal energy and can result in interference to your station as well as nearby radio and TV receivers? The answer is induced currents in conductors that are in poor electrical contact. So if your connections are sloppy, your signal may be sloppy as well. Bad connections can have a, a lot of secondary impacts besides the improper functioning of your station. They can cause RFI to nearby receivers. And basically, loose connections can have a, a spark or some sort of energy transmit between them. And that spark can give out a wide band signal, which can wreak havoc as far as causing interference to your station and nearby receivers. What is one cause of broadband radio frequency interference at an amateur radio station? The answer is arcing at a poor electrical connection. So if there's a poor connection, energy might jump across it like a spark. This arcing can create a very broad signal which will cause interference. So it doesn't work on just one specific frequency. It'll basically shoot a, a radio signal that covers a broad range or broad band of frequencies. So arcing at a poor electrical connection is one cause of broadband radio frequency interference at an amateur radio station. How can a ground loop be avoided? The answer is connect all ground conductors to a single point. So a ground loop is current that is circulating through the grounding wire for your equipment. And this is usually caused by having more than one ground point where wires are going to two or more separate grounds. So if you got two ground rods buried in the ground and equipment from your station is separately grounded to either to those two ground rods, what can happen is the energy can go down one ground wire into the ground rod, travel through the earth and back up the other wire. So that creates the ground loop. So this is bad, so make sure all your equipment is hooked to a single ground point and that is going to a single point into the earth. And now it's time for the G4C quiz. So take out a pencil and a piece of paper and number 1 through 13. When you're done with the quiz, you can check your answers at hamwhisper.com under the exam answers page. You'll find it under the G4C section. I'm going to go through the questions pretty quickly, so if you need more time, just pause the video and take all the time you need. So, alright, let's get started with the quiz. Question one, which of the following might be useful in reducing RF interference to audio frequency devices? A, bypass inductor, B, bypass capacitor, C, forward biased diode, or D, reverse biased diode? Question two, which of the following should be installed if a properly operating amateur station is interfering with a nearby telephone? A, an RFI filter on the transmitter, B, an RFI filter at the affected telephone, C, a high-pass filter on the transmitter, or D, a high-pass filter at the affected telephone. Question 3. What sound is heard from a public address system if there is interference from a nearby single sideband phone transmitter? A, a steady hum whenever the transmitter is on the air, B, on and off humming or clicking, C, distorted speech, or D, clearly audible speech. Question 4. What is the effect on a public address system if there is interference from a nearby CW transmitter? A, on and off humming or clicking. B, a CW signal at a nearly pure audio frequency. C, a chirpy CW signal. Or D, severely distorted audio. Question five. What might be the problem if you receive an RF burn when touching your equipment while transmitting on an HF band, assuming the equipment is connected to a ground rod? A, flat braid rather than ground wire has been used for the ground wire, B, insulated wire has been used for the ground wire, C, the ground rod is resonant, or D, the ground wire is resonant. Question 6. Which of the following is an important reason to have a good station ground? A, to reduce the likelihood of RF burns, B, to reduce the likelihood of electrical shock, C, to reduce interference, 
or D, all of these answers are correct. Question 7. What is one good way to avoid stray RF energy in an amateur station? A. Keep the station's ground wire as short as possible. B. Install an RF filter in series with the ground wire. C. Use a ground loop for best conductivity. Or D. Install a few ferrite beads in the ground wire where it connects to your station. Question 8. Which of the following is a reason to place ferrite beads around audio cables to reduce common mode RF interference? A. They act as a series inductor. B. They act as a shunt capacitor. C. They lower the impedance of the cable. Or D. They increase the admittance of the cable. Which of the following statements about station grounding is true? A. The chassis of each piece of station equipment should be tied together with high impedance conductors. B. If the chassis of all station equipment is connected with a good conductor, there is no need to tie them to an earth ground. C. RF hotspots can occur in a station located above ground floor if the equipment is grounded by a long ground wire. Or D. A ground loop is an, an effective way to ground the station equipment. Question 10. Which of the following is covered in the National Electrical Code? A. Acceptable bandwidth limits. B. Acceptable modulation limits. C. Electrical safety inside the ham shack. Or D. RF exposure limits of the human body. Question 11. Which of the following can cause unintended rectification of RF signal energy and can result in interference to your station as well as nearby radio and TV receivers? A. Induced currents in conductors that are in poor electrical contact. B. Induce voltages in conductors that are in good electrical contact, contact. C. Capacitive coupling of the RF signal to ground. Or D. Excessive standing wave ratio of the transmission line system. Question 12. What is one cause of broadband radio frequency interference at an amateur radio station? A. Not using a ballon or line isolator to feed balanced antennas. B. Lack of rectification of the transmitter's signal in power conductors. C. Arcing at a poor electrical connection, or D, the use of horizontal rather than vertical antennas. Question 13. How can a ground loop be avoided? A, series connect all ground conductors. B, connect the AC neutral conductor to the ground wire. C, avoid using lock washers and star washers in making ground connections. Or D, connect all ground connectors to a single point. And that's it for the quiz in Lesson 17. So for the answers to the quiz, go to hamwhisper.com. You can find them under the exam answers page under the G4C section. And until next time, and Lesson 18, this is Andy, K4GKP, saying 73, and I hope to hear you on the air soon.